How's it going everyone? This is Ken from Pixelated Thoughts and my impressions of the Silent Hill 2 remake are largely positive. I think that I probably have one or two gripes, but one is really minor and kind of doesn't matter. It's just like a personal opinion. The second one is something that I think just can't be ignored because it relates to the performance issues that are found on PC. I am going to show the footage that I capture in its entirety. I'm not going to cut anything out. What you're going to see a lot is a lot of stutters and frame drops, and it's just something that I just dealt with as I played through the game. It's one of the things that I think is just unavoidable because I tried everything and I'm playing on a 4070. Beyond that though, I think that this is fantastic. I think this is Bluebird Team's best work. And I also believe that it's one of the best survival horror remakes and it deserves to sit right next to Dead Space and Resident Evil 2. Let's talk about it. To kick things off, I want to talk about the visuals. I think what's here is fantastic. I love how detailed these environments are. And I think the biggest thing for me, and for whatever reason, I kind of turned this game into a vandalism simulator, is that you can break as many windows as you want and you also get an achievement for it. So I recommend you do it constantly. I went around when I was given a melee weapon and I just started breaking windows. <laughs> I just could not get enough of it. The sound of it is satisfying. The feeling of it is satisfying. It looks really cool. This is one of those games that I was really impressed with because I did not expect you to be able to do that to certain surfaces, but you can. It's a lot of fun. I recommend you do it. You got to be really thorough in these types of games because you do not know whether or not you're going to miss out on some really cool things because there are items and resources that you can gather when you go through and just start smashing things up. It's something I really like. I'm also really impressed by the character models and also the creature designs. I think for the character models specifically, it's just the way their body language is portrayed. I think it's really cool when you're looking at James, you're entering into a different environment and he has this like cautious stance to him where he looks like he's kind of confident walking into a room, but he also looks like at any point he's going to have a panic attack. It's like his shoulders slump. He doesn't look like he's comfortable. It's pretty much a projection of the player. And I think it's fantastic. I think James looks great. I think Maria looks great. Just pretty much every character. I think the creature design is pretty top notch as well. I think if I had one complaint, it would be like the damage modeling doesn't go far enough. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but I'm a big fan of like the necromorphs and dead space. And also the way that zombies kind of fell apart in Resident Evil 2. I was kind of hoping for that here. There are some moments of gore, but it's not exactly pronounced. And that probably makes me sound crazy, but if you're looking at the visual aesthetic of Silent Hill 2 and you're getting into Silent Hill and you're walking to the other side and you see just how run down and grimy everything is, you kind of expect that from the monsters as well. And I was kind of hoping that Blue Routine would take a next step because you can tell that they're almost on the verge during some of the cutscenes in this game of showcasing some incredible gore, but they really don't go as far as I think they could have. But beyond that, I think visually, this is a striking game and one of the best looking games of this generation. Moving on, I wanna talk about the sound design. I think this is fantastic. It is terrifying to play this game with headphones on, especially because as you're making your way through the town, when you're making your way through these different environments and you hear the creatures just kind of rustling on the other side of the wall, or you hear the music and the static just kind of increase, it is deeply uncomfortable to play this game. And I love it because it really does the original game justice. And I feel like if you remember playing the OG Silent Hill 2, you'll remember that that game and the series in general, they are not about cheap scare tactics. They are about sustained horror and the audio design played into that. And it does so here and it's great. And I did not doubt that Bluebird team could pull that off because they've been great in terms of audio design for their other games. But here it's excellent, and I really think it adds to the overall tension found in the game. So before we move on, I do want to talk about the voice acting in the game because I do believe that it really adds to the story. For the most part, I think everyone does a really good job, but the voice actor for James Sunderland nails it. 
I think they give a believable performance. You really do empathize with James at times, but you're also uncomfortable around him. Every time he interacts with a character, you always feel like he's hiding something. Like he's not really saying what's on his mind. He's putting on this facade. I think it's really well done because there's a lot of subtlety here. And even though every Silent Hill 2 fan knows what's going to happen with James, I do believe the performance does enhance the overall narrative and does make James a more believable character. It's just really well done overall. Now that we've gotten the production values out of the way, we can talk about the gameplay. And I think we'll start with the melee combat. And look, melee in Silent Hill has never really been good, hasn't ever gotten close to being great but what's here is really good and the reason for that is because you now have better mobility james can dodge and that's something that i really want to emphasize and focus on when you're getting up close and personal with these enemies and you're hitting them with the various melee weapons i really like the fact that there's weight in combat and that when you're going up against enemies there is a bit of give and take like you can't just spam an attack button because if you try to do that, you will more than likely see a counterattack that will do a serious amount of damage to you. This really feels like the type of game where you really need to play patiently. You need to take your shots when you can get them and you need to dodge out of the way as quickly as possible. And you just can't get greedy. You are really capable in combat and the dodge button is very responsive, but that does not mean that you can just flat out fight multiple enemies at once and come out unscathed. You really do have to pick and choose your fights. And that's something I really enjoyed in this game because I did wander around a hallway once and try to fight two enemies at the same time. And I almost died. It was incredibly tense, but it's very cool to know that you have this dodge button that will get you around enemies and get you into a position where you can finish them off relatively quickly. I really think that melee combat here, I would describe it as satisfying. Now, when it comes to the ranged combat, the use of any type of firearm you find in the game, I think what's really interesting is that James looks really capable and he does look comfortable around firearms, even though he is not a trained combatant. But what I do like is that the target reticle will just kind of sway back and forth. So while he is capable of aiming over his shoulder and this is a modern survival horror title, so most protagonists are for some reason really well versed with weapons. At least in this regard, James looks uncomfortable firing a gun, which is something that I really like. I think one of the biggest questions about Silent Hill 2 when all the trailers were dropping was, is this going to be a true survival horror experience? Because what we were seeing was James being very capable, utilizing practically all these different weapons and having all this ammo. And here's the thing, you are so capable with melee combat that it does affect your resource usage. And I think that if you are comfortable with dodging and getting up close and personal and kind of finding that rhythm when you are fighting these enemies, that more than likely you're gonna find yourself not using your gun as often. That's what I did in like the first four to five hours of the game. I was pretty much just kind of going in there and swinging at everything because I'm a thorough player when it comes to survival horror titles. I know how these games work. I want to go up to all these different areas, break windows, check cabinets, drawers, all that stuff, because you're more than likely going to find a number of different resources. But the thing is, just like The Evil Within, and I use this as an example because you're gonna go into that game find a whole box of ammo, get one round. That's kind of how it works here. But the big difference is that instead of just kind of wildly swinging and not being effective in melee, like in the Evil Within, you're absolutely mauling enemies in this game. And you also have a dodge move that can get you some pretty good distance and allows you to reset. It's really just getting into a rhythm and then you'll find yourself almost defeating every enemy you come across melee wise. And then afterwards, you can kind of see how much ammo you have. That's pretty much how I've been acting the entire game. But on the other hand, if you are not comfortable with getting up close in these games and you don't like melee combat for the most part in survival horror titles, and a lot of people don't like fighting some of these enemies, 
you're more than likely going to expend a lot of ammo and you really shouldn't because as you know the deeper you go into these games the more likely you are going to need that ammo to fight a boss and then if you don't have ammo then you have to get up close and personal and that's probably the worst case scenario for a lot of players so outside of combat you have exploration and puzzle solving and i've mentioned this before and i was talking about the environments earlier that you really want to explore early on because you have the capability to break so many different windows and all this different glass and you're going to want to explore and be thorough because there's so many hidden items littered throughout the environment you are actually rewarded for exploration you can also get tricks sometimes because you know you're going to go into an area and say to yourself it looks quiet this doesn't look like i'm going to be ambushed and that's completely false you are more than likely going to be attacked this is a survival horror title when it comes to the puzzles found here for the most part i think they've all been really good i think that there are some that are really engaging and require the player to be very thorough when you're exploring the environment and that there are some that require you to you know really read in between the lines some are just kind of like in your face, like, hey, man, there are these numbers in this room. Go find them. This shouldn't be too difficult. But there are those that require you to put things together to make sure that they all fit in a certain way. And then from there, solving the puzzle. I've always liked Silent Hill's approach to that. I've always thought Konami did a really good job in that regard. And that is on full display here with the remake. I think that overall the gameplay experience is solid and I do think that there are going to be some people who are just going to love the melee combat because of how crunchy it is. I do believe there are going to be some people who hate the melee combat because they don't want to get as up close and personal with some of these enemies. But I do think that it's really good and it's the best that Bloober Team has put out. It was probably the one thing that I think the community was really concerned about. I think they saw the different gameplay videos and you know kind of came to this conclusion that it was going to be rough. And I wouldn't blame them because what I saw, I had concerns as well. But having played through this game, I am just enjoying the way it feels and the way it handles. And I think your concerns are going to go away the moment you start playing this game. I didn't really experience any major issues during gameplay. I think everything functioned as intended. It's just really solid overall. Like I said, more than likely, your love of melee combat in a horror game is probably going to be the one thing that kind of holds you back a little bit. But everything else is really well done. So while I'm enjoying my time with the Silent Hill 2 remake, and I really like the fact that the game is really accessible, there's different difficulty sliders, I think that the only thing that's really holding me back from loving this game are the performance issues on PC. I don't know how it handles on PlayStation. If you can leave a comment about your experience, let me know. But on PC, this game has a number of rough moments where you're going into the fog and there's frame drops and there's stuttering. And it's probably one of those things that usually I would just forgive. I'm usually okay if there are slight performance issues, but for whatever reason, when I'm going into new sections, whether it's the hospital, whether it's the different apartments, it's one of those things where I'm like, it doesn't have to have stutters constantly. It doesn't have to have these weird frame dips all the time, but it just happens and it can be very distracting. Now, luckily, I didn't really experience that in combat or in any of the major you know, combat sections. But when I'm playing through this game and I'm just looking forward to exploring and being thorough, those drops are noticeable and they can be really rough. And it's one of the things that I really hope that Blooper Team puts a patch out and can be fixed, but I just want to be transparent and say that while I really love this game, the performance issues are distracting. And it's more than likely going to be the reason why I do not commit to another playthrough until a patch resolves or at least lessens some of the issues that I see because the game will have stretches where it's running really well. And then for whatever reason, you go into a new section and it just starts to stutter and you see all these different frame drops and it just can really affect your overall enjoyment and it can be immersion breaking at times. And who knows, maybe by the time this video releases, there's a patch that Blooper Team pushes out and it really corrects a number of the different performance issues. But I'm just giving my thoughts on what I've played through so far. And, you know, my fingers are crossed that when this video does release that the game is somewhat fixed and that would be great because I really do want to enjoy this game when there aren't so many issues when I'm trying to play it just at 60 frames per second like I really took off the 
unlimited frame rate and said at 60 fps it should settle itself down but it did not it, it was still rough and i just didn't know what to do at that point point. and yeah while the game is great it does have its issues and i think that most modern titles do have performance issues but it shouldn't be this prevalent i just want to make sure that people are informed before they make a buying decision but beyond that, I really didn't have any issues with the game. My one personal gripe is the way they transition into cutscenes. It feels very old school. <laughs> like in this modern era of games and graphics, we get a lot of games and I think we're spoiled, but we get a lot of games where it's just like this seamless transition to a cutscene. But for some reason here, it's old school in the way that You'll see a certain area or location and you'll interact with like a gate or door and then it just transitions to a cutscene. Or you'll be walking around randomly outside and then you'll transition into a cutscene because the fog will just take over the entire screen. And I always feel like when that happens, it's really funny. Even It's kind of awkward at times because I'm like, all of this looks like it's being done in game because the in game engine is really good. And what's here is really good. And I don't know why it just couldn't have transitioned a little bit more cleanly. I think that's like my only personal complaint about it. But otherwise than that, I really, really like what Bloober Team did here. I think that once the performance issues get resolved, this is going to be one of the best remakes. Not just best survival horror remakes, one of the best remakes. I think that people can look at this game fondly and say that Bloober Team did the original Silent Hill 2 justice, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the next Silent Hill they work on. I'm kind of hoping they go back to one, because it is kind of awkward to go to two directly and not talk about you know how one worked. <laughs> that was kind of weird, but whatever. How about we go to, uh, straight to Silent Hill 4? I'd love to see the room get remade. I would. I'd love a just a remake of that game. Konami, if you're listening, Bloober team, if you're listening, uh, you know, maybe think about doing Silent Hill for the room. Just kind of leave Homecoming and Downpour in the tail end of things. But let me know what you think, because that's going to do it for this video. If you happen to like the content, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. I'm Ken from Pixelated Thoughts, and I will talk to you next time.